You might have heard some things about a Dyson sphere lately. What's up with that? There's a new study that may suggest we are not alone. A group of researchers say they've identified at least seven stars that might be surrounded by super advanced alien megastructures known as Dyson spheres. What if someday we could build a superstructure so big we could basically surround our sun and capture its energy directly? There's something called a Kardashev civilization, named for Nikolai Kardashev, who's an astrophysicist. If you look at the history of what we call great civilizations, one of the things that distinguishes them is their capacity to generate and consume energy. And so if that's the case, you can think of levels of civilization based on how much energy they consume. And thus was born the Kardashev scale. A civilization that's level one on this Kardashev scale has the power to harness the energy of its home planet. And that's extraordinary when you think about what that involves. Uh, on our home planet, there's the energy of volcanoes, of tornadoes, of hurricanes, and of earthquakes. This is Earth exhibiting a display of energy that typically we run from or die from. If we could control all of that, that would be an extraordinary state of our civilization. Tapping a volcano of its energy so that you now can use that energy to run the city that the exploding volcano would have otherwise leveled. So we're not there yet, but that would be a civilization type one. Civilization type two on a Kardashev scale is, well, what else is generating energy out there? Well, our host star, the sun. So imagine we had total control over the sun's energy. Right now, we just set up a few solar panels here and there, and it's, you know, we're, you know whatever energy happens to get there on a clear day and not at night, that we're tapping some of the energy of the sun but the sun is emitting energy in every single direction in space. So imagine you could harness all of that energy. That's vastly more energy than is contained in the earth. That would be a civilization of extraordinary power. Would they have warp drives, wormholes? Who knows? They'd be traveling across the galaxy, between galaxies, because the energy is so plentiful and they have access to it, and especially can control it. It's a big factor when you have access to awesome supplies of energy. That would be scale two. Three on the Kardashev scale would be, you can control all the energy of all the stars in your galaxy. So our galaxy, the Milky Way, has several hundred billion stars. So if you found some way to harness all of that, oh my gosh, this is, I mean, I can't, who can imagine what that is? Can you create universes? Can you, I mean, who knows? I don't know, I can't think that far ahead. What I do know is that it would be awesomely dangerous <laughs> as any new access to energy has always become when in the hands of bad actors on the geopolitical stage. So what this has done is enabled some people, some colleagues of mine, to say, if there's a civilization type two controlling all the energy of its host star, would we be able to see that in our data? There's so much data now available with many telescopes that are, that has, that has observational and spectroscopic data of billions of stars. Billions. We have observational data on billions of stars in the universe, not only in our galaxy, but other galaxies. And so if there was a type two civilization, could you detect it? What would it look like? Well, a couple of things. If you're looking at invisible light, the kind of light that the sun primarily gives off, they would be blocking that light to absorb that energy for their needs. 
So you would see an ordinary star just begin to disappear as they built structures around it to absorb that energy. There's an interesting fact here. Well, there's no such thing as a free lunch in the universe. You can't just take the sun's energy and then have the energy disappear. It manifests in other ways. You know how it manifests? As heat. Heat, you know this intuitively, even if you've never thought about it. If you have an internal combustion engine car, the kind with pistons, all right, you put in gasoline, that gasoline burns via pistons and spark plugs and all the right to move the car forward and the engine gets hot. Your use of that energy not only propels your car forward, but also turns into heat. If there's a civilization that managed to completely enclose its host star, it would get rid of all the visible light because that's high quality energy that it's using. It takes that light through the solar panels. The star would slowly disappear from a quote, a regular looking star and would ultimately appear as a red glow in your infrared telescopes. So there was a recent study in a peer reviewed journal, the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, one of the more respected journals in the world of a study that's just simply looking for these red, these red glowing blobs in the galaxy, in the pre-existing data that's already out there. Didn't even have to design a telescope for this. The telescopes are already bringing in the data. They're just asking a different question on those images. So out of a sample of millions of stars, they found seven candidates that might be one of these type two civilizations, or it could be some gas cloud that was warmed up and is radiating infrared. <laughs> so. Uh, of course, the press loves aliens. If your first guess is, there's an alien civilization that's making this infrared, the press will talk about the work. If it's, well, it could be gas clouds that have been warmed with dust in them that have been warmed by this energy that's been radiated and we're and it's masquerading as what could be a type two civilization. You can't rule that out either as a scientist just because you don't fully understand what you observed, it doesn't mean aliens did it. That shouldn't be anyone's first guess. The universe brims with mysteries and physical phenomenon we're still discovering. And so, yeah, just I tend to be a little more conservative about that. A friend of mine died a few years ago, Freeman Dyson, a brilliant physicist. Uh, he came up with the idea of an entire sphere. So a Kardashian civilization type two they just simply have control over all of the energy of their host star. One way to do that is to build a sphere around it that completely encloses that star. So no energy escapes your detectors, your panels. It just needs to have the power to tap that energy for whenever it needed it for whatever purpose. And you can imagine sort of strips of of panels, it wouldn't have to be the entire, let some energy get out if you needed it. Maybe those panels can can close up and open again, like those stadiums that open and close in, in the rain or in the hot sun. And there's no telling what inventions, what discoveries, what new understandings of the universe would unfold in those civilizations versus ours, a type zero civilization. So that's, what's up? In case you were wondering, the long and short of what it is to harness energy that's all around us. Till next time, keep looking up.